Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India friends welcome to the course analysis of variance and design of experiments so you can recall that in the last lecture we had discussed about the development of likelihood ratio test for uh, testing the hypothesis about the equality of more than two parameters and you can see th this was a very general approach whatever is your condition whatever is the type of model you can use this likelihood ratio approach and you can see one thing more that we have considered only one setup y equal to x beta plus epsilon where beta is going to be estimated by some beta hat that can be least square estimator or maximum likelihood estimator or you can change something else but that accordingly you have to ch change the statistical properties of other uh, estimators also but anyway that was the main objective so now you can see once your uh, analysis is based only on a model and the corresponding estimator don't you think that you can employ such an approach in any type of uh, linear model well the question comes what are the different types of linear model you see we are doing here only analysis of variance but this is not the only thing we are trying to deal with the linear model and linear model has got several variants for example if you come to linear regression analysis or you come to econometric theory models which can practically be transformed into the setup of this multiple linear model of the framework y equal to x beta plus epsilon so that was my idea and that was the reason that why i was uh, emphasizing on the likelihood ratio test in the beginning because now either you have a panel data model or a different or a different types of model you simply have to estimate the parameters and you have to use the framework of likelihood ratio test to develop the analysis of variance but whenever you are trying to handle a different types of model there will be different types of complications there will be different types of constraints those constraints you have to take care and that is the reason that this analysis of variant uh, uh, technique has not really been developed in many such models now in this lecture we are going to understand two more types of test of hypothesis one is uh, related to the linear parametric function that means there is only one linear parametric function and other test is when there are more than one linear parametric functions at this moment in this uh, lecture i am uh, going to explain it from the theory point of view but as soon as we discuss the designs of experiment you will see that all these techniques are going to be used very frequently they are very useful techniques so so uh, through the, these two lectures i will try to develop later on the multiple comparison test okay after this in this uh, lecture i am going to now introduce the analysis of variance for a one way model now if you try to see in the likelihood ratio test what we have developed up to now we have considered only the design matrix as x and we are simply saying that okay these values uh, inside this uh, matrix x can be 0 or 1 depending on the nature of experiment or whether this is or the nature of model whether it is one way two way etc that we have discussed in the earlier lectures but now a uh, natural question comes that okay this is a very general setup and now we have got this uh, test statistics also 
But what will really happen if we have a particular type of setup like as one way, two way, etc. So, in this uh, lecture, I will initiate a discussion that how are you going to use the likelihood ratio test in the setup of one way analysis of various model and that is going to be a simple y equal to x beta plus epsilon model under a fixed effects. And once I complete uh, this part, then after that I will try to develop the same test through the principle of least square and then you will be able to judge that you have considered only the one way model, but you have uh, found that test through likelihood ratio principle and through the least squares principle and both will come out to be the same. So, that will help you in making a one to one relationship between the two approaches and that will help you in future that whenever we, uh, we want to develop uh, uh, analysis of variance tests for some different type of model, surely this likelihood ratio principle is going to help you more. Right. So, okay, so now we begin our lecture, but uh, first we try to have a quick revision what we did in the last lecture and based on that I will try to move forward. Right. So, uh, you can recall that in the last lecture we had considered the multiple linear model as y equal to x beta plus epsilon where y is a n cross 1 vector of uh, n random variables y 1, y 2, y n. And, uh, x here is a n cross p matrix of n observations on each of the p independent variable x 1, x 2, x p. Beta is a p cross 1 vector parameters, epsilon is a n cross 1 vectors and with mean 0 and covariance matrix sigma square i and epsilon follows a multivariate normal. And under this setup, we had found that expected value of y is equal to x beta and covariance matrix of y is sigma square i. So, that is the model under which we had worked earlier and in this lecture also we are going to continue with the same model. And uh, you can uh, recall here that in the last uh, lecture you had developed the test of hypothesis for the null hypothesis H naught beta equal to beta naught where this uh, beta and beta naught they are the vectors and beta naught is known to us. Right, and uh, for that we had developed the analysis of variance uh, table like uh, this one. We had divided the total variation into uh, two parts, the variation due to the beta, that means the variation due to the model that you have obtained and the random errors, right. And the corresponding degrees uh, of freedom were p and n minus p and the sum of squares were obtained as a small q1 and a small q2 and then we had obtained the mean square and from there we had obtained the F statistics and, uh, the, and uh, we also had discussed the use of fisher cochran theorem because of which you are trying to add this and this uh, degrees of freedom together. So, that p plus n minus p is equal to n and uh, q 1 plus q 2 is equal to here the total sum of squares given by this quantity. Right. Then you had seen that yeah here this q1 and q2 are given by these quantities and and then you had seen that we had developed the uh, likelihood ratio test statistics and we had found the distribution and based on that we had obtained the value of the constant and finally we decided that h0 is going to be re rejected if f is greater than f1 minus alpha with the p minus 1 and n minus p degrees of freedom so this is what we have done Right. Now, uh, we continue on the same lines, but now we consider that test of hypothesis related to a linear parametric function. So, uh, we are trying to indicate this linear parametric function here as a L transpose beta is equal to delta. Right. So, delta here is uh, known some quantity and, and if you try to see this uh, uh, L transpose beta is something like uh, if you have uh, two parameters beta 1 and beta 2, this can be like beta 1 minus beta 2, which can be written here as a 1, 1 and here beta 1, beta 2. And if you have suppose three parameters beta 1, beta 2, beta 3, then one example of L prime beta can be beta 1 minus 2, beta 2 plus beta 3. So, this can be written as 1 minus 2, 1 
beta 1, beta 2 and beta 3 and so on. So, we are trying to test suppose beta 1 minus uh, beta 2 is equal to 5 or beta 1 minus twice or beta 2 plus beta 3 is equal to 6 and so on. So, this type of uh, hypothesis we want to test and you will see that this is going to be very useful when you try to consider the multiple comparison test. So, now we assume first that uh, this linear parametric function L transpose beta is estimable. Right. And now you know that why you are trying to assume if you try to recall that in the earlier lecture we had uh, considered this condition and we had seen the advantages of assuming the linear parametric function to be estimable. Right. So, here obviously this uh, L vector this con uh, contains the values like small L1, small L2, small Lp which are some known constants and uh, you have here the, the parameter vector beta. Right. So, now the null hypothesis which we want to test or for which we want to develop that test statistics is H naught L transpose beta is equal to delta, where delta is some specified constant. So, you see my objective here is that once you are uh, encountering such a situation in any real life, how are you going to proceed further? You see once you know that test statistics then you can simply uh, substitute the data in the statistics, find out its value and you can take a very quick decision. But definitely my objective here is to explain you how are you going to develop the statistics. So, that if you are trying to deal with some unknown quantities, then you have some idea where to start, how to start and how to get the correct outcome. Right. So, now once again uh, we come back to our linear model y equal to L and uh, where uh, y was uh, following a uh, multivariate normal distribution with mean x beta that is the mean vector and covariance matrix sigma square i. And we had earlier uh, obtained the maximum likelihood estimators of beta and uh, sigma square like this. Beta hat equal to x transpose x whole inverse x transpose y is the maximum likelihood estimator of beta and sigma square hat is equal to 1 upon n y minus x beta hat transpose into y minus x beta hat, this is the maximum likelihood estimator of sigma square. Now, you are trying to consider the uh, linear parametric function L transpose beta and uh, now the first question is how are you going to estimate it. So, we are simply going to replace beta by here beta hat, so that I can estimate this linear parametric function L transpose beta by L transpose beta hat. Now, the next question comes what are the statistical properties of L transpose uh, beta hat. So, in case if you try to find out the mean and uh, variance of uh, L transpose uh, beta hat, you can see here expected value of L transpose beta hat is simply going to be L transpose expected value of beta hat and we have shown that expected value of beta hat is equal to beta. So, this will become here simply L transpose beta and the covariance of L transpose beta hat is given by sigma square L transpose x transpose x whole inverse into L. And uh, since uh, beta hat is a linear function of normally distributed random variables, so we can conclude that, that uh, and so this L uh, transpose beta hat will also follow a normal distribution with mean uh, L transpose beta and covariance given by this quantity. And uh, we also have done this result that uh, n sigma hat is square divided by sigma square will follow a chi square distribution with n minus p degrees of freedom and then yes we are assuming that uh, x is a full column rank matrix. right? And we also had done a theorem in the last lecture where we had proved that L transpose beta hat and n sigma square hat divided by sigma square. Uh, they are independently distributed. So, now I try to use uh, some results and try to see uh, how we can proceed further. Now, in case if I, if I ask you that looking at this result that L transpose beta hat follows a normal distribution and this n sigma square hat divided by sigma square follows a chi square distribution and both of them are going to be independently distributed. Can you think of any probability distribution which can be developed here? 
right you have learnt about the t distribution right in the t distribution if you try to see you uh, used to write that if I have a random variable following a normal if there is a uh, another random variable y following a chi square with say some degrees of freedom uh, see here n and suppose if x and y both are independent then we used to write that x uh, uh, divided by is square root of y by n this will follow a t distribution right. So, well I am not giving you here the complete uh, exact theory, but I want to give you only here an idea that uh, that how we are doing it and why we are doing it that is more important to understand. So, now under H not uh, the statistics if you try to see here this is here like this you are trying to write down here this part here as a normal and this part in the denominator here as a chi square. So, now using this result about the t uh, statistics I can develop here this statistics that is going to follow a t distribution with n minus p degrees of freedom. So, now once you have uh, learned or you have found that this statistics is going to follow a t distribution then there is no problem in now developing the decision rule. So, the uh, test for testing H not uh, L transpose beta equal to delta versus H 1 L transpose beta is not equal to delta, we will reject the null hypothesis H not whenever absolute value of t is greater than or equal to the calculated value of t star 6 at 1 minus alpha by 2 level um, and n minus p degrees of freedom, where this quantity t 1 minus alpha by 2 actually this uh, indicates the the points on the t distribution. So, this t 1 minus alpha n 1 indicates the upper handed alpha percent point on the t distribution with n 1 degrees of freedom. So, this value can be obtained from the tables or now if you are trying to use any software these values are available there. So, now you can see here using this statistics you can develop the test of hypothesis or you can test any null hypothesis in the framework of L transpose beta is equal to delta. Right, okay. So, now after doing this test of hypothesis which was only for a single linear parametric function, we can also develop the test of hypothesis where we are trying to test more than one linear parametric functions. Right, so the difference between that test uh, which now we are going to develop and the test what we have just developed, the, there is only one difference that in the earlier hypothesis it was only H naught L transpose beta equal to delta, there is only one linear parametric function, but now we have more than one linear parametric function, right. So, we are essentially trying to say that uh, suppose the ith linear parametric function is given by say here phi i. So, phi i is assumed to have a, a form like L i transpose beta. So, obviously, this L i is going to be a p cross 1 vector of some known elements and beta is also going to be a, uh, a vector of regression coefficient of the order p cross 1. Now, when we are trying to develop that test of hypothesis, now we have understood that uh, if we do not assume that our linear parametric functions are estimable, we are going to trap in several type of complications. So, we assume here that all the linear parametric functions are estimable that we are going to consider under this hypothesis. So, we assume that this ith is the, uh, linear parametric function phi i is estimable and suppose there are k such functions like as phi 1, phi 2 up to here phi k and we are interested in the hypothesis like H uh, naught phi 1 is equal to delta 1, phi 2 is equal to delta 2 up to phi k is equal to delta k, where delta 1, delta 2, delta k they are some known constants, right. So, for example, you can have here a hypothesis like where you want to test beta 1 minus beta 2 is equal to suppose here 2 and beta 1 plus 2 beta 2 minus 3 beta 3 is equal to suppose here 6, right. So, now in this case your phi 1 becomes here 
beta 1 minus beta 2 and this can be written here as a 1 minus 1 and 0 and with the parameter vector here beta 1 beta 2 beta 3 yeah you assume that suppose there are 3 uh, parameters beta 1 beta 2 beta 3 and this phi 2 will simply become then here beta 1 plus twice of beta 2 minus 3 beta 3 which can be written here as a 1 2 minus 3 and then here beta 1 beta 2 beta 3 right. So, you can see here now you are uh, writing this phi 1 here as say see here L 1 prime beta and phi 2 here as say L 2 prime beta right. And now you want to test that uh, uh, that uh, phi 1 is equal to here 2 means H naught is like this and uh, phi 2 here is like 6. So, even this can also be written further here as in the form of a vector or say phi 1 phi 2 is equal to 2 and 6 like that right. So, that is what we are going to do here that we are going to club all this individual linear parametric function in the form of vectors and matrices right ok. So, now we try to club all this phi 1 phi 2 phi k in a vector phi and all this constant known values delta 1 delta 2 delta k in the uh, vector here delta. Now, this uh, null hypothesis which you have considered here like uh, this one, this can be written here as say h naught say here phi 1 is equal to here delta 1 phi 2 is equal to here delta 2 up to here phi k is equal to delta k and this, this is what we are going to write here say in general here as say h naught phi is equal to L transpose beta is equal to delta. But now you can see here th this L transpose which I am highlighting here this L transpose is no more a vector because now this is going to com uh, compile here all the values of the say this uh, L 1, L 2 etcetera. So, in case if you uh, try to look into this example here then L is going to be something like here 1, minus 1, 0 and here then 1, 2, minus 3 which are and then you have here beta 1, beta 2, beta 3 like this one. So, this is what I am trying to write down here that uh, this L transpose is a k uh, cross p matrix of constant associated with L 1, L 2, L k. So, that is what you have to keep in mind. Right. Earlier you had uh, uh, considered this capital uh, L to be a vector quantity, but now it is a matrix. So, now our first objective is how to estimate this phi or this vector phi. So, that we know that you simply have to replace beta by beta hat and you can obtain the maximum likelihood estimator of phi i as here say phi i hat is equal to L i transpose beta hat where beta hat is your maximum likelihood estimator x transpose x whole inverse x transpose y and then you can club all those phi 1, phi 2, phi k here. So, and this can be written here as say L transpose beta hat. Now, it is not difficult to prove that expected value of this phi hat is going to be phi and covariance matrix of phi hat will now be something like sigma square times here capital V, where this capital V is a um, sort of matrix of the elements like a Li transpose x transpose x whole inverse Lj. So, when I am trying to take i equal to j, then uh, this is going to indicate the diagonal element that means the variances of phi 1 hat, phi 2 hat, phi k hat and when I am trying to consider the off diagonal elements then for example, the i j th element of this matrix V that is going to be, indi to be indicated by L i transpose x transpose x whole inverse L j. Right. So, now based on that uh, phi hat you can define here that uh, this quantity phi hat minus phi transpose 
into V inverse into phi hat minus phi divided by sigma square will follow a chi square distribution with k degrees of freedom and and sigma square hat divided by sigma square that follows a chi square distribution with n minus p degrees of freedom where your sigma square hat is the maximum likelihood estimator of sigma square obtained as 1 upon n y minus x beta hat transpose into y minus x beta hat. Now, I ask you the same question once again. You want to develop here a test of hypothesis or a test of statistics. You want to find for H naught this uh, hypothesis that phi is equal to delta. Now, you have here two variables here, this one and here this one, right, like this one and this one both are following uh, chi square distribution. So, can you think of uh, some statistical sampling distribution which is based on the use of two chi square random variables f distribution. So, what you try to do in the f distribution if you have here two variables say here x and y both are suppose following chi square distribution with say n 1 degrees of freedom and say n 2 degrees of freedom. And suppose if both of them are independent, then we know that x upon n 1 divided by y upon n 2, this will follow a f distribution with n 1 and n 2 degrees of freedom. So, now the question here is how are you going to use this result? So, for that we uh, have already established that okay, uh, both these uh, quantities they are going to follow a chi square distribution and we can also prove using the result uh, of about the independence of two quadratic forms that we had uh, discussed earlier that both these quantities in the we which have got the chi square distribution which is phi hat minus phi transpose v inverse phi hat minus phi divided by sigma square and and sigma square hat divided by sigma square they are independently distributed. Well, I am not giving you here the proof because the, because the proof is extremely simple straightforward. You simply have to write down both these uh, uh, quantities in the form of a quadratic function and then you have to say, just say y transpose a y and say y transpose b y and then you have to use the result about the independence of two quadratic forms where you say that a into b should be a null matrix. So, if you try to do this simple algebra, you can very easily prove that both of them are independently distributed. So, now what I can do, I can take this statistics and try to divide it by its degrees of freedom k and then I try to take here the second statistics and sigma square hat divided by sigma square and I try to divide it by here degrees of freedom and minus p. So, this is going to follow a f distribution with k and and minus p degrees of freedom under h naught, right. And so, if you try to simplify here, you can write down here that this is statistic there's n minus p upon k into phi hat minus delta transpose v inverse phi hat minus delta divided by n sigma square hat that is going to follow a f distribution with k and n minus p degrees of freedom under h naught. Remember one thing here, here this k here is the number of parametric functions that you are trying to consider phi 1, phi 2, phi k, right. And p here is the number of parameters that you have. So, that is what you have to be very careful when you are trying to write down the degrees of freedom for this test. So, now you have uh, developed uh, this thing and then now you can uh, write down the decision rule, right. So, this uh, null hypothesis H naught phi equal delta is rejected against H 1. H 1 can be at least 1 of this phi i is not equal to delta i, right. Then when uh, f is greater than or equal to f 1 minus alpha k n minus p where this quantity f 1 minus alpha k n min minus p is the 100 alpha percent point on the f distribution with k and n minus p degrees of freedom. So, you can obtain the value of this statistic f from the data and this uh, critical value from the table or you can use any software whatever you want and then you can decide whether your h naught is going to be accepted or not. That is all.
So, now you can see here you have uh, developed uh, three types of uh, hypo, uh, test statistics for uh, null hypothesis H naught say beta 1 equal to beta 2 equal to beta p and then H naught for one linear parametric function say L prime beta is equal to delta and finally, when you want to test the, uh, test the more than two linear parametric functions simultaneously. So, now uh, with uh, these three tests of hypothesis, you will see that uh, our journey for the development of analysis of variance uh, is going to be really good and helpful. Right. Now, I try to address here one more topic. You see, now you have developed the likelihood ratio test and all this test uh, for a very general structure of y equal to x beta plus epsilon, where you are trying to estimate beta by beta hat, which is uh, the maximum likelihood estimator or the ordinary least square estimator of beta. Now, my question is, uh, as we have discussed in the initial part of the course that we are trying to deal with one way model, two way model, etcetera in the setup of analysis of variance. So, what will really happen to this likelihood ratio test what we have developed for H naught beta 1 equal to beta 2 equal to beta p, when we are trying to consider the one way model. Now, you know that what is the meaning of one way model, that, that means there are uh, there is only one variable say x is the quantity of fertilizer then x1, x2, xp they are going to indicate the different types of quantities which are assigned to the value of x. For example, x1 equal to 1 kilogram, x2 equal to 2 kilogram and say xp is equal to p kilogram. Right. So, now we want to translate this likelihood ratio test in this setup. Right. So, whenever we are trying to consider the one way classification, our objective is to test the hypothesis about the equality of means on the basis of sample which have been drawn from univariate normal population with different means, but the same variance. Right. So, what are we going to now assume here that suppose we have here the population say normal mu 1 sigma square, say here normal mu 2 sigma square and suppose here normal mu p sigma square, right. Well, you can use here mu or beta, but I am just trying to give you an example that what are we going to do here. And then you are trying to draw here a sample, say sample number 1 of size n 1. That means, you are trying to draw n 1 observation from this population and similarly here n 2 observations uh, from the second population and say here n p observation from the p -th population and you want to test uh, in general h naught mu 1 is equal to mu 2 equal to here mu p. right? So, this is about the analysis of variance that you will see in the general uh, theory of statistics. right? Now, here in this case, uh, in the case of y equal to x beta plus epsilon model, uh, we have the parameters here uh, beta 1, beta 2, beta p. So, now I can consider here the population say, say here normal beta 1 and sigma square, then another population say here no, uh, beta 2 variance sigma square up to here normal with parameter beta p and variance sigma square. Right. So, we are going to draw here a uh, sample 1 from the first population of size n 1, sample 2 from the second population and sample of size say n p from the popul uh, population which has got the parameter beta p mean and sigma square as variance. What you have to observe here? that you see when we are trying to consider here uh, this setup, I am assuming that the variances in all the p population, they are going to be the same sigma square, but only the means are changing which are beta 1, beta 2 here, beta p. So, you can ask me okay, what will happen if uh, sigma square is uh, uh, they are different. Well, you can do something, but then definitely you may not get a 
uh, good test in terms of the power of the test. Right. So, uh, that is why this is the need of the development of the statistical tool that we need to assume here uh, that all the variances in the population they are going to be the same. And then this uh, assumption is not very difficult to explain to a user because uh, suppose we are trying to conduct a clinical trial in which we are trying to uh, see the effect of different levels or the different doses of the medicine. So, we are going to give that medicine to the population of the patient which have got the same disease. Right, you are not going to give the medicine of the uh, body temperature to a patient who has got a pain in the stomach. So, th th that is why it is not a uh, very uh, difficult to justify this assumption in real data also. So, now we are assuming that uh, let this uh, sample is indicated by the values y i j, right, where this uh, j is going from here 1 to n i. So, i is going to change from here 1 to p. So, we are trying to obtain the sample here like this y 1 1 y 1 2 up to here y 1 n 1 from the sample 1 and similarly from uh, this second population we are going to get here the sample y 2 2 uh, 2 1 y 2 2 up to here y 2 n 2 and so on. So, these are the uh, samples and, and sizes that we are trying to obtain from uh, different population. So, I can write down this fact here briefly as a y i j is following a normal beta i with variance sigma i square j goes from 1 to n i and i goes from here 1 to p. Right. And we also assume that these random samples which are drawn from the different population, they are assumed to be independent of each other. Now, you understand that if you do not try to assume the independence, some correlation will come and then possibly when you are trying to do the algebra, the algebra may become little bit complicated. And in practice also, it is not very difficult to justify that this assumption is uh, not a realistic assumption. So, all these observations which we are going to get here for say y i j i goes from 1 to p and j goes from here 1 to n i, they can be written in the form of y equal to x beta plus epsilon. And how to do it? Do you remember how we have done it? We had uh, uh, written all the observations, first and one observation on y as a like this, second uh, uh, set of n 2 observation here like this and uh, last uh, uh, set of n p observation here like this and we had club all the observations together, right. So, the same thing here I am trying to do here. This is the first set of observation, this is second set of observation and this is the last set of observation. Do you remember that when we had discussed that how the values of uh, x i j's are going to be uh, in the case of one way and two way uh, uh, analysis of variance model. So, that is the same thing I am trying to do here, but beta will remain as such beta 1 beta 2 beta p and epsilon will uh, also be partitioned as this first n 1 values corresponding to the sample observation from the first population. Similarly, here the second set of n 2 values of epsilon, they are indicating the random errors in the uh, observation in the second sample and so on for the last uh, sample of size n p, these epsilons are indicated suitably. And if you remember, we had done this type of job earlier that we had assumed that uh, x i j takes value 1 if beta i occurs in the jth observation or I can say simply that if effect beta i is present in x j. And if not, then it uh, takes value 0. That means, if effect beta i is absent in x j, right. And then this, this is how we have written our the design matrix here. This was for the uh, say n 1 observations, uh, this was here our x for n 2 observations and so on. So, you can recall that we had written a big matrix that was looking big actually. And uh, so, this is how you are going to write down here the design matrix, right. Now, after this if you try to see I am making here an assumption that n is equal to summation i goes from 1 to p and i. That means, I am trying to indicate here the total number of observations say n 1 plus n 2 plus here n p right. And now, 
in case if you try to see the structure of this matrix uh, design matrix x uh, the total order is going to be n1 plus n2 plus np cross p that is n into p beta is going to be here the fixed and first n1 rows of epsilons are uh, indicated by 1 0 0 0 0 and so on similarly the next n2 rows of epsilon are indicated by 0 and 1, where 1 is occurring at the second place and all other values are 0. And similarly, the last NP rows of epsilon are indicated by the 0, 1 value such that only the last value in the vector is 1 and all other values are 0. And when you are trying to write down such a structure, you can see very easily that the rank of x will come out to be here p. Right. So, this is going to be a full column rank matrix. That means, if you try to employ here the maximum likelihood estimation such that beta hat is equal to x transpose x whole inverse x transpose y, there you need to find out the value of x transpose x whole inverse that you can find very easily. right? And if you try to find out here, uh, here the expected value of y, that will come out to be the same as x beta and covariance matrix of y will come out to be sigma square i. That is the same thing. My idea of uh, explaining you uh, these three quantities is that now you can see that whenever you are trying to write down the same model which you have used in the likelihood ratio test statistic, when you are trying to write down in the setup of uh, one way model, then also the same assumptions are valid. And now, you can see here that when we are trying to say that uh, in the design matrix, the values of x i g s are going to be 0 and 1 and the way those values have been assigned, now you can see the beauty. Those values have been assigned in such a way such that the rank of x comes out to be here p. Why? Because if the rank does not come out to be p, then you are going to be trapped in bigger troubles, your x transpose x will not be invertible, then either you will have the problem of uh, multicollinearity in the data or you will have to use the generalized inverse. And once you are trying to use the generalized inverse, well, mathematically you will be happy that you have found a solution. But if you try to think from the user perspective, uh, if there are three persons who are going to find out the value of ordinary least square estimator on the same data set, the three persons will report three different values and so uh, means everything is going to change. Right. So, that is the same story if you go to a doctor and the doctor says uh, uh, that you take uh, two tablets in a day and another doctor says for the same disease that okay, you take five tablets a day. And the third doctor says that you try to take uh, eight tablets a day. Now, you will be confused that uh, which of the doctor is giving you the correct answer. But if you ask the doc doctor, they will simply say, okay, I have used here the generalized inverse and based on that, I have given you the value. So, all of them are going to be correct. right? So, now you can see here that this completes the representation of a fixed effect linear model of full rank. Now, now, there should not be any problem in understanding this. Right. So, now we try to develop here the uh, test of hypothesis for this uh, one way classification model with fixed effect linear models of full rank. So, the null hypothesis is now going to be the same that we considered in the case of uh, likelihood ratio the statistics that was h naught beta 1 equal to beta 2 equal to beta p and we are simply assuming that suppose they are all equal and they are equal to some common value beta. Right. So, once again you are interested in the same test of hypothesis which is about the equality of more than one parameters or more than two parameters simultaneously. Now, you have to think and tell me. You are interested that whether all the parameters are going to assume the same value or not. What will be your here now the alternative hypothesis? I mean, suppose if I say here, suppose there are 
four parameters beta 1, beta 2, beta 3 and beta 4 and suppose you are interested in H naught beta 1 equal to beta 2 equal to beta 3 equal to beta 4 and suppose uh, in this case say any two parameter they are not the same. Suppose beta 2 is not equal to beta 3. Now, do you think that this hypothesis is going to be accepted? No. Suppose if you think that okay, beta 1 is not equal to beta 4, but all others are holding true. Then what will happen in this case? Do you think that the null hypothesis is going to hold true? No. Similarly, if I try to take here, suppose uh, say this uh, uh, beta 1 is suppose equal to beta 3, but beta 2 is not equal to beta 4. Now, what you will say? Your hypothesis is not going to be true, your H naught is not going to be accepted. So, now you can see here that whatever would be the condition, right, in case if this is happening that at least one pair of beta i and beta j they are not equal, then this H naught is not going to be accepted. So, this is the way we try to frame here the alternative hypothesis that H1 that at least one beta i is not equal to beta j, i is not equal to j. Right. So, it is possible that if you try to take here H naught beta 1 equal to beta 2 equal to beta 3 equal to beta 4 equal to beta 5 equal to beta 6. And suppose out of this all this beta 1, beta 2, beta 3, beta 4, beta 5 they are equal, but only suppose beta 5 is not equal to beta 6 then what will happen to this H naught? This is going to be rejected. So, this H naught is going to be accepted only when all beta 1, beta 2, beta p are the same and it is not going to be accepted if out of many possibilities anything happens. And the most uh, simple statement can be that at least one beta i is not equal to beta j for i not equal to j. So, this is we, uh, how we try to specify the alternative hypothesis and you will see that uh, I am trying to explain you here the setup of uh, one way fixed effect model, but the same thing is going to hold true when we are trying to deal with two way or three way or say any higher order model. And that is why, uh, why I am trying to explain you here clearly. After that, I will simply write H1 at least 1 beta i is not equal to beta j, that is all. And here in this case, you can see that uh, there are parameters beta and sigma square that are unknown and they need to be estimated so that we can develop the test of hypothesis. So, now you can see here couple of things. We already had developed the likelihood ratio test for this null hypothesis. So, the question comes what are we doing here? My objective is very simple. I want to show you that uh, when you try to use the likelihood ratio test in uh, the setup of one way model, then how it looks and how are we going to proceed further. Right. Now, the second thing uh, after some lectures uh, or later on you will see, I will try to develop the same test. So, now we are uh, going to develop the same test using the least square principle, least square method, right. And we will try to show you that whatever outcome you are going to get here, both the outcomes are going to be the same. And so, this will help you to understand both the methods and to make a one to one relationship between the two approaches. That is my simple objective, right. So, now you have to uh, remember, you have to recall how we had developed the test of hypothesis using the likelihood ratio test for the hypothesis H naught beta 1 equal to beta 2 equal to beta p. So, now my humble uh, request to all the student is that please try to have first a very thorough revision of the likelihood ratio test. And what I want? is the following. I am not really interested in uh, that you try to write down the entire proof in a single shot. What I want 
that you have to understand how are we going from one step to another step. And for that, why are we doing it? What is the reason? And whatever is the reason, how that is going to be fulfilled. For example, if I have got a say normal random variable, I have got a chi-square random variable, then it is giving me an idea that possibly we can use here the t test or t stat 6 can be developed. But for that, I want to first show that this variable is following a normal or not. And then I need to show whether the second variable is following a chi-square or not. And thirdly, I have to show that both are independent or not. And in order to show them, we have to use some result from the linear estimation, matrix theory, etc. So, what are those results which are going to be used here? In the case of likelihood ratio test, I have explained you each and everything in much detail. But now, it will not be possible to, uh, to explain all the things or repeat all the things again and again. So, that is why you need to understand those steps very clearly. And once you understand those steps very clearly, in this case, when we are trying to develop the uh, likelihood ratio test for the one-way analysis of variance model, that will become very simple and straightforward. And surely, I will not be doing here the entire algebra. I will simply be picking up the results from there and I will be using it here. And that is how I will progress further. So, that is why I will try to end the lecture here today. And I will request you that you please try to revise the all the steps, all the details in the likelihood ratio test. So, in this lecture, we have developed the test of hypothesis for the linear parametric function and for the set of linear parametric functions. And they are going to help us and then they are going to create the foundation for conducting the multiple comparison test when our null hypothesis is not accepted. When accepted, there is no problem. But that will try to answer the question that what will happen if null hypothesis is not accepted. For example, if you have beta 1 equal to beta 2 equal to beta 3 equal to beta 4 as a null hypothesis. And suppose this hypothesis is not getting accepted. That means at least you expect that one pair of uh, this beta uh, uh, i and beta j is creating the problem and we want to know which is that pair. So, for that you will need those two test of hypothesis. So, I have explained you the utility of those tests. Now, it is your job to revise them and to understand them and I will see you in the next lecture with more details on the same topic and I will try to develop the analysis of variance test for the one way analysis of variance model using the likelihood ratio test. So, so you try to practice, revise and I will see you in the next lecture. Till then, goodbye.